Alright, VC, what's going on? It's Chris back here in Dallas. Make a quick video for you. Um, it's going to be another recent finds video. Ones that I needed to get to for quite a while. I'm um, getting a backlog and I need to make some videos because I don't want to put them away until I do and listen to them and yada yada yada. <clears throat> so, uh, I got some obviously some jazz in here. Um, but I try to mix it up. I got some soul, I got some uh, new wave, some punk, um, classic rock, a little country, you know, folky. So, um, yeah, I got my Dodger shirt on, playoffs start this week. Um, yeah, third time's a charm, hopefully. So, all right, first, I'm just gonna get into it because I got quite a few. Um, try to talk a little bit about them, but I don't have a whole lot of time. I don't want to make this an hour video. So, first, we got uh, Stan Getz Quartets. Underrated sax player, in my opinion. Obviously, Stan Getz, is, everybody knows who he is, but he's not as well regarded. On the Prestige, original mono, 56th Street, or 50th Street, I'm sorry. Um, terrific album. I think this is like a compilation type deal that Prestige had put out. Um, just lovely album. His playing is great. Certain albums can be hit or miss, but for the most part, his albums are fantastic. Next one is a, whew, that's a cooker, man. Um, I don't know if I showed this in a previous video or not. I think I might have, maybe. Hold on. I think I might have already showed that one. Uh, so, oh yeah, we got Duke Jordan. That's on Savoy. It's an original mono. Uh, he's on piano on this song. And then we got uh, Art Blakey on drums, Cecil Payne on baritone, and uh, Percy Heath on bass. Terrific, terrific album. Love that cover too. Most of these were uh, eBay finds. I don't know if I know it, show this one or not. This is a uh, fantastic Frank Strozier. Pretty much the only album you need from him. Um, he made a couple other ones as a leader, but uh, not as good. And he's also in the Young Lions album that I showed, uh, I don't know, maybe a month ago with you know Bobby Timmons and all those guys. But look at that lineup. Booker Little, Paul Chambers, Wynton Kelly, Jimmy Cobb. Terrific album. First model press on the Red VJ. Been looking for this one for a while. It had the, the Rainbow label, uh, a later VJ. Um, so I was looking for this one for a while, one popped up, crazy deal, had to get it. I think it was an eBay purchase as well. Next one, Sornette Coleman, Change of the Century. Original mono in the Atlantic. Somebody, of course, had to screw it up, which always pisses me off, but what are you going to do? Donald Cherry, Charlie Hayden, and Billy Higgins on this one. So, terrific album from Mr. Ornette Coleman. Love that cover as well. All right, been really trying to pick up a lot from this uh, next artist, Smokey Robinson and the Miracles Special Occasion. The title track, Special Occasion. Would be one of the hits off of here. Um, let's see. If you can wait, I think in Yester Love were the only three. But special occasion, I think, was the big one off of here. And trying to pick up more Smokey. Um, just any time I find some uh, Motown, Tamla albums, I, I try to pick them up. I just love that era of music. Um, for me, it's almost one that, uh, you know, I can kind of go to at all times, you know what I mean? Like, even, I can listen to this all the time. Like, some genres I can only listen to 
in the car. Like I, I don't know, hard rock I tend to you know only listen to in the car, but this I can listen to anywhere and it sounds fantastic. So next we got Keith Jarrett Mysteries. ABC Impulse. His uh, albums are just kind of mellowing. Um, they're not like, you know what I mean? They're not definitely not a bop, but just very mellow. Just him kind of usually playing. Um, just terrific stuff. I love Keith Jarrett. I see his stuff more and more lately for some reason. I don't know. Not sure why, but. Next, uh, running out my uh, Horus Silver collection. This one is, uh, oops, blowing the blues away. That's a original mono, 47 West 63rd. Labels are a little dirty, but plays great. Um, very nice to have that to the Horse Silver collection. On this one, we got Blue Mitchell, Junior Cook, Horse Silver, Eugene Taylor, and Louis Hayes. So, great lineup. Um, not my favorite from him, but uh, definitely fantastic. Always nice to have another Horace. Next one Milt Jackson, Bags and Flutes. One's on the Black Atlantic label as well. I think Bobby Jasper plays on this with him, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Kenny Burrell, Percy Heath, um, Art Taylor uh, play on one side, and then on the other side, like Tommy Flanagan, Kenny Burrell, some people like that. So great lineups. Um, Bill Jackson he plays a little vibe, plays a little flute. Um, <clears throat> I'm not always in the mood for a vibe, I gotta be honest with you, but, I mean, he did it right, you know what I mean, he, he's a good player, I just, I can't always get into it, but, this one, it sounds good, I just, you know what I mean, I might not have been in the mood for that specific instrument that day, sometimes I just want straightforward bop jazz, no extras, just give that to me, uh, so something I'm gonna revisit on this one. Next one we got television. Sir Second Elm, right? Adventure. Still don't have uh, Marquee Moon, still looking for that one. So this is actually the first television album I had. <clears throat> I've heard Marquee Moon just on uh, YouTube and Discogs and stuff, but yeah, I was pleased with this. Uh, sounds great. It's from 1978 on Electra. I just, I really enjoyed it. I didn't think I would. Uh, I just kind of got it just to give it a chance and I actually did enjoy it. Um, makes me want to pick up Marky Moon now, so. Nice addition. I have not listened to this one yet. <coughs> so if any of you guys have heard this, please, uh, oh, sorry, let me know what you think. This is Jerry Garcia. One of the solo albums. What's this called? Retraction? Reflection. Sorry. I've not listened to this one yet. I'm really not a huge Dead fan, but I thought I would give it a shot, being his solo stuff. We'll see. Pretty cool cover art there. We'll see if I like it. I'll let you know. We got John Coltrane Infinity. Separated labels there. String orchestra arranged and conducted by Alice Coltrane. So I think that she kind of went back, you know, because this is posthumous. Or is that, is that how you pronounce it? Posthumous. But uh, she kind of went back um, and arranged and kind of conducted the strings over his music, I believe, on this one. And it works. Um, so a lot of people don't like what she did to it, but. I can appreciate it. I mean, who knows anyone, you know, more than she does, you know? I think I would think she would know her own husband, right? 
so I can appreciate it and I think she did a good job. Next one, kind of a weird cover for a Kenny Burrell album. But this is A Generation Ago Today on the Verve label. Um, see who plays on this one with them, I can't remember. I don't want to open it up right now. But, uh, like I said, another great Kenny Burrell album. He made several, and uh, this is no exception. You know, a lot of people only heard his Blue Note stuff, but he made some great stuff for Verve, uh, New Jazz, Prestige, that kind of stuff. So, um, another good one. I, I gotta say the cover is a little odd to me, but... The next one was a big grail for me. I've been wanting this one for a long time. Um, still not a mono, which I want, but this is the first stereo pressing. Miles Davis, Kind of Blue. Not my favorite jazz album of all time. It's uh, a great album. Um, I think there's several other albums that are better, but Six High Stereo. <coughs> I've been looking for this one for a long, long time. Um, I just didn't want to just jump and buy it, you know what I mean? I could just buy it online. Uh, Cannonball Adderley, Paul Chambers, Jimmy Cobb, John Coltrane, Bill Evans, and Wynton Kelly. So, I mean, that's a great lineup, obviously. And it sounds beautiful. Not really a bad track on here, but to me, it's still not, not even my favorite Miles, really. Um, next one... Mr. Kai Winding, Kai Ole. As you can tell from the title, it has kind of a Latin vibe to it. Uh, new Latin trombone sensation. It's on the uh, Verb label. Obviously, uh, him and that. <coughs> Sorry. J.J. Johnson would be the well-known trombone players, Curtis Fuller, but uh, yeah, it's okay, it's decent. Um, they have an orchestra backing this as well, so. Next was kind of a weird one, but uh, Weird Al Yankovic, Dare to be Stupid. This one has uh, like a surgeon that would be the hit off of here. Uh, Georgia the Jungle. Dare to be stupid, but like a surgeon was the main hit off of this one. I don't know, it's kind of fun. Don't take it seriously. Mr. Gabor Zabo. 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 Not sure how you pronounce it. Uh, does a cover of Day in the Life on here. Um, Guantanamera. Original Impulse. Man, that label is just, I mean, it's not as good as Blue Note, but it's still a great label. I still love that. Love the spine. Really can't beat an Impulse. The thick jacket. I love it. Um, not my favorite from Mr. Zabo Zabo, whatever you want to call it. His last name, um, but uh, still great nonetheless. Uh, his guitar playing is fantastic all the time. Yeah, so it's first stereo. <coughs> all right, this next one um, I've been trying to find an original for a while, just the pricing and whatever. You can get them, but not in the condition that I wanted, so I had to settle for this one. John Coltrane Quartet Africa Brass, which is one of, I mean, it's a top 10 Coltrane album for me. I don't think it would be a top five, but it's a top 10. Um, but that's the yellow Impulse label, which was maybe in the 80s or something like that. Early, early 70s, early 80s. Terrific album. Um, like I said, top 10, but probably not top five for me. This one is terrific. I'm going to pull it out here. Also one, um, I think it was Andrew Tales from the Crate said this man never made a bad album. And I would probably have to agree with that. This is Wayne Shorter. Introducing Wayne Shorter, his first album for uh, VJ. That's 
the line up there. Not too shabby. Uh, Wayne Shorter. <coughs> Sorry. Lee Morgan, Winton Kelly, Paul Chambers, and Jimmy Cobb. Not bad for your first full length. On the BJ label. Pretty, pretty nice. It sounds terrific. Um, he just has a way about him uh, with his uh, arrangements. I think uh, he wrote every single one on here except for the last song on side two, and they are all terrific. Um, Blues all the cart and uh, down in the depths. Down in the depths is like a ten minute song on side one. It's just fantastic. I was very happy to pick that one up and add it to the collection. Alright, next one. Mr. Sonny Rollins on Contemporary. This one is uh, in the Contemporary Leaders. So it has a Barney Kessel, Hampton Hawes, Leroy Vinegar, and Shelly Mann on drums. Uh, There's a black Contemporary. Obviously, a uh, stereo present. Uh, terrific album, Sonny Rollins, kind of like Wayne Shorter, didn't make a bad album until a point, I think some of his later um, 70s, maybe kind of got a little, you know, iffy, um, I'm trying to think of the one I didn't like, I like, I didn't like one, but for the most part, if you see a Sonny Rollins, it's going to be great, and there's no exception, I love his contemporary stuff. All right, next one, Herbie Hancock, one I did not have. I don't want to say I'm a Herbie Hancock completist because he put out a lot of stuff in the 70s and 80s, uh, which would this would be considered a fusion-y. Um, this one's Mr. Hands. It's the Columbia label. It's okay. Um, I don't know if it's going to stay in the collection or not. It probably will because Herbie, but, you know, I can only take so much fusion. I just not that big of a fan of it, so. We got uh, Rolling Stone with December's Children. I think I had a long time ago sold this to, uh, you can see the covers kind of, ringwire and a lot of ringwire actually, but uh, I think I had sold this to uh, my friend Morrissey Brandon, and uh, I didn't have it, so <laughs> I probably shouldn't have done that, but um, yeah, this one has Get Off My Cloud, um, Talking About You, um, Gotta Get Away, I'm Moving On. I mean, it's a great album. This one's on London, I believe. And always want the mono if I can. Uh, what else we got here? How about a little country? Little Rusty Weir. Stoned, slow, rugged. Got a cool little picture there. Kind of barefoot smoking the guitar. Very cool country. Um, I wouldn't say folk, more country. Uh, kind of like outlawish. But uh, good stuff. Alright, next we got a couple of. Uh, James Brown's. This one is hot. From uh, 1975. Uh, let's see here. I don't think any of these are super big hits. Please, please, please. Um, hot would be the title track off of here. It's like six minutes. It's great, but. Uh, yeah, no, like, super big hits came off this, so. Still a good album from him, though. <laughs> look at, this one is, uh, Take a Look at Those Cakes, James Brown. Only has, like, four songs on this side. Uh, For Goodness Sakes, Look at Those Cakes is an 11-minute song on here. This one is from 1978. Kind of crazy from him. I think early 70s James is probably where it's at, but uh, still still good and nice to have added to the collection. Next one, got uh, the Raspberries, I think this is just self-titled. I 
remember where I got this. It was, I think it was cheap though. It was like a buck or two. Um, got go all the way. Come around and see me. I saw the light. Rock and roll mama. Good stuff. And last but certainly not least, Miss Janice Joplin in concert. Uh, let's see where this was recorded. So the first two sides are Big Brother and the Holding Company, and uh, sides three and four are Full Tilt Boogie Band. Um, they're kind of recorded in different spots. Um, yeah, I guess a lot of them are recorded in Detroit, Fillmore West, but the uh, Full Tilt Boogie was recorded at the Canadian Festival. Um, Canadian Festival Express, June 1970. So, nice double double album. This one's in perfect shape. That's why I picked it up. Cool gatefold. Anything from her is usually pretty damn good, so I would give, pick that up. And it is good live recordings. So that is it for uh, this stack. Hope you enjoyed. Um, as always, let me know your thoughts. And uh, I'm trying to comment on your guys' video. I still watch, but um, if I'm on my phone or something, it's hard to comment on everybody's videos, but I, I'm trying, so, uh, but just so you know, I usually am watching your videos, um, at work and stuff like that, so hopefully all is well, and, uh, hopefully everybody has a great week, and we'll talk to you next time, and, uh, yeah, go Dodgers.